I am not just a, a journalist to tell the story and show what to do. A story is my job, but to tell a story that will change somebody's life. It's passion, yeah? It's passion. That's right. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> that is, that's right. We should come up with a film that actually reflects who we are as Africans. Something which you like, it is more higher. Yeah, you can do something extra because you like it. But if you don't like that thing and you have forced you to do it, it means that when you finish, you go to, you will come home, and you will not find something to do. The road to Africa's film future. The ride's a bit bumpy. The dust often obscures what's up ahead. But beauty is all around. And so are the characters, who will tell the continent's past, present, and future stories. Arriving at the Kilimanjaro Film Institute, it appears that a trek through the jungle has led to an unlikely place to make movies. But once inside, it's easy to see how this environment enhances creativity. It's not all fun and games here. The faculty are serious about making quality films. This is not Tazama story. Tazama is for people. Yeah? Any, you are not, no, no one will pay you to tell their story. But you have to tell a story that will inspire a lot of Tanzania. Samuel Obai is one of the founders of the KFI, as the school is affectionately known. This old man from uh, the United African Alliance Community Center, it's an old uh, former Black Panthers. So he had well, some youth had that are very, very much interested in film. And he had a very old camera and he said, well, just take it and, you know, you, you like film, take it and go and use it. So when I took it and started using it, that's where I see myself into it and slowly and slowly and until the time that I was like, wow, this is my place. From just east of Kandahar. So he came up with an idea for a film on a unique Tanzanian tribe. A friend put him in touch with the National Geographic channel in the U.S. and he managed to get a modest amount of money for his first documentary. Wainangi, Tribe of the Rocks, has been running on Nat Geo since 2004. Not long after his first film success, Sam decided on a mission to pass his passion and his skills on to other young Tanzanians. When we started, we selected young people, basically collecting them from other local organizations, which this organization are also helping young people, because uh, we believe in helping young people to gain the skills in filmmaking. So we said we should go back and source students who are coming from challenging background. They went to orphanages, charities for street children, and training NGOs to look for their first class. Now four members of the inaugural class work as trainers at KFI. Those staying here have not given up their ambition as filmmakers, but they feel a duty to help young people who come from similar circumstances to their own. Abisai Maeda, now a faculty member at KFI. 
I believe in sharing. So I wanted to share what I had with my, uh, with my fellow Tanzanian youth. Uh, because I believe sharing knowledge is for community development. I believe sharing is something that will bring Tanzania to our next level. Good luck Mushi and El Bahati Akyo, whose name also means good luck, were fast friends from the start. Despite being separated professionally, one teaching camera work, the other editing, they're constantly communicating at the school. They live in the same neighborhood and they often get together to pass the time away from work. Sometimes our friends visit us and sit and discuss because funny and discuss are different things compared to what we maybe we are doing at KFY. They have big plans for their lives that include Abisai as well. One day in the future, we should have maybe a place where we can all stay. Maybe we buy a land, then we divide it into three, into two or three plots. Then everyone has to stay on his own place. But we are all in one on one ground. Also, making a film together. Besides being friend like this. I think we, we thought of making one film together with Abisai. I think we will we'll do something which, which is going to combine both of us, three of us. We expect to call it three can play this game. He can edit, I can film, Abisai I can di direct, Abisai can direct or can shoot. So you see how it's possible. I can hold boom. I can control sound. He can control sound. He can control sound. Mm. So <laughs> that's why. I... Sorry, sorry. <laughs> that is, that's uh... it's actual. <laughs> that's actual. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> that's why I say three can play this game. He said we can touch different angles. We are three, but we can play the game. Just imagine in the ground we used to play 20, 22 people, I mean players, but for us three can play this. And crucially, they support the same football team. It's passion, yeah? It's passion. That I have, I have something from my heart which I love, which is I love watching football, specifically I love Liverpool team. I love Liverpool because of our motto, never walk alone. This is like a courage we used to give someone. Good luck is using his camera talents to highlight a story he feels strongly about. I was trying to make the story about how to give girls a voice, especially who are getting pregnant so they can go back to school and reach their, their goals, because everyone has a goal. Bahati loves teaching. It's not only about maybe editing a different project whereby people can watch it and then know what's going on in the world, but also I can share the knowledge I have with my fellow sister and brothers, whereby tomorrow also they can spread this message to community and raise the voiceless of people to be there. I mean, to, uh, to, to, to be known in everywhere. Samuel has special praise for Abisai's abilities. Abisai is really good in, journal, in, in journalism because in some of the stories that he did are very investigative. I mean, like this story of the, the young boy in, in the restaurant. I mean, look at the environment of that boy. It was very scary. Wenga walisema maisha ni wili. This is Abisai's favorite piece of work so far. He was in Dar es Salaam and came across a group of apparent drug addicts living in a graveyard. I was in my very good uh, outfit, then I thought, this outfit, they won't fit me to, to sit here. Then I decided to go and buy some funny cloth, then I put them on, I bought uh, one pack of cigarettes, I just light one and I just, I, I don't smoke, but I went smoking trying to smoke, it was very hard. 
Yahaya Ali ana umri wa miaka kumi. Anaishi na wazazi wake maeneo ya makaburi ya Kinondoni. Na haya ndio makazi yao. Kikubwa kwa Yahaya ni mdogo wake Gladi. He soon found a small family with both parents taking drugs. Their 12-year-old boy went to school every day, returning to take care of his three-year-old sister. Then at the end of the day, I decided, okay, this is story, I want to tell this story. But why do I have to tell? Because there's a lot of story about drug abuse and all that. I thought, okay, I have to tell this story from this boy perspective, that he's living in this kind of life, but also he's really, uh, he's really aware that he has a young sister uh, and uh, he was very scared of her life. He was just going to school, but he could not even think about what he was studying. He was just thinking about this young sister he has left home. It was kind of a terrible story. Eneo hili anapoishi ya haya na familia yao ni makazi ya vijana watumiao madawa ya kulevia. Almarufu kama mateja. Hali hii ni changamoto kubwa kwa ya haya. I went back to Dar es Salaam and uh, I went with my camera alone and uh, I went and I gave this young boy a camera I started playing with. I asked him film and all that. Then he trusted me. I started doing a story, film them and all that. And uh, finally I made a, a story out of it. But I tried to make it an inspiring story. Kitu kinacho msikitisha ya haya zaidi ni mazingira ya kimaisha ya wazazi wake. The story ran on the KFI produced TV program Tazama Tanzania. It provoked a strong reaction and action. Then at the end of the day, uh, I found people who were like, they organized themselves and they support that young boy and her sister and they are now in school because of that story. The family, the father, the parents now, they decided themselves that they have to go to rehabilitation. The results of this story being told goes to the heart of why most of these young filmmakers want to do documentaries. There's a lot of story that I, I am passionate of. For example, I like to, st to tell an uh, inspiring story, uh, something that will inspire somebody to do something. Not those stories that people will watch and say, okay, I've seen, then what next? I am not just a, a journalist to tell the story and show what to do, a story is my job, but to tell a story that will change somebody's life. An ancient land, ready for change. And I'm proud to see a woman. So how this all works. Tradition and modernity. The comes from the project, we can do it. We see them live. Hopes and challenges. We bring you the faces of Africa. I am not just a, a journalist to tell the story and show what to do. A story is my job, but to tell a story that will change somebody's life. It's passion, yeah. It's passion. That's right. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> that's, that's, uh... We should come up with. The film that actually reflects who we are as Africans. Something which you like it is more higher. Yeah, you can do something extra because you like it, but if you don't like that thing and you have forced you to do it, it means that when you finish, you go to, you will come home and you will not find something to do. Ramadan Suleimani, or Rama as he prefers to be called, takes care of the equipment and maintenance and shoots many of the commercial projects. He says he's found a home at KFI. Mazazi wangu alifariki ripoti mia mwaka elfu mbili na tano. Kwa hiyo baada ya hapo nikawa na waza future yangu itakuwaje. Lakini mwisho wa siku KFI kaja ika save uh, maisha yangu na yale mawazo ya kuwa na waza kwa mbasina wazazi sito weza kufanya hiki nikaona zi yale akaondoka kutokana walianza kunipa thanks na sasa wananilipa mshahara sasa ule mshahara ninaopata unaendesha maisha yangu na mimi nakuwa mtu katika watu kama watu wengine however most of the current students don't see their future at the institute i could become a camera operator professional 
where whereby I can work anywhere in this world and also I can I'll become a director and also a script writer. I would like to be a professional camera operator and the storyteller and the script writer. Um, for my side, I would like to be a professional camera operator and slash director. <coughs> yes. Yeah, exactly. For me, uh, my, you know, my expectation was to become a professional director. My future is to become a professional film lady from Africa, from Tanzania. And one day I hope to be somewhere like Hollywood, because I think they did the best in filmmaking. Many students come from families in small villages where resources are basic and attending film school would seem a dream. <laughs> Farah Phineas is at home with her family after a short day of classes on the weekend. She lives at home with her two younger sisters, an older brother, and her parents, a doctor and a housewife. Farah worked for a couple of newspapers, but found that fairly uninteresting. Now she has been learning the rights and wrongs of camera work and has become the envy of the neighborhood. I've been telling them about about what we we learn. Some some days before I was I, I had their camera. Then I gave to my sister. Then make picture of, of of me. Then he called me this. I say ah this is wrong. This is you have to leave a, a bit of space <laughs> if, uh, above my head. That called headroom. Then I I have to I used to teach them about some things. And in the street my friends. I've been telling them that I'm, I'm in a uh, film school. We do produce uh, TV programs. Then they, they, oh wow, can I join your school? Then I say, yeah, maybe. Then She appreciates the faculty at KFI. Apart from class, if you have a personal problem, they can help you. Yeah, because. Is I can give an example. I was having a, a problem like when I do a mistake, I feel like ah, it's all over. It's I mean, the world is over. It is falling on me. But uh, my trainers uh, gave me an advice, so I'm a, I'm changing now. Faraha feels strongly about the social impact her future in film can achieve. So that means you have to educate people to solve problem, make, maybe to make people aware of something in the, in the society, uh, to give the solutions. Yeah, that's why uh, it's very important because sometimes there are things make, uh, confusing people in the society. They don't know the, 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 uh, the solutions. Yeah, so we have to find out that. And her family agrees. <laughs> One student who seems clear about a prosperous future is Alfayo Miseyeki. Coming from a Maasai tribe famed for their warriors, cattle, and tracts of land, Alfayo has no real role models in the film industry. Really, I don't know the famous Maasai who are working in film. I never see the Maasai who are working. But uh, I, the first time for me to go to in Kafwai, and to see when there are some masses who want to work in film. Half the community turned out when Alfayo came home with the camera crew. His neighbors and friends know little about film or even television. The TV is, 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 is something like uh, it's not easy to get in our village because we don't have, really, we don't have power. But they support his ambitions. 
when I asked them that I want to become a filmmaker, they told me that it's okay if you like because you know something which you like it is more higher. Yeah, you can do something extra because you like it. But if you don't like that thing and you have forced you to do it, it means that when you finish, you go to you will come home and you will not find something to do. They're used to a very simple existence. <laughs> but Alfayo has always dreamt of a different style of life for himself. Through an NGO, he studied English, computers, public relations, and even hotel management before changing his direction to film. I'd like to tell the real story. Like, uh, in this, in this uh, village, we, we have uh, like a problem of water. And uh, as you see yourself, that uh, there is a problem of water. So I can make a nice story, which is true, about uh, this village, how the people suffer, how, the, how, the, how many times are, are taken to go to fetch water. Students here are keen on documentaries, particularly about situations they know well. But they watch the so-called bongo films made in Tanzania, as well as Nigerian films popular throughout Africa. It is so nice bongo films, but we learn from those bongo movies. We learn the mistake they did, so we know where to correct those mistakes. It is good also in storytelling. The way they tell story and the culture, their culture, you know, they don't have to change their way of dressing. Mostly they use their own culture to the way of dressing. That's nice. And they, they have only one style of storytelling that is from love, witchcraft and religion. The film from here, Tanzania, they have a, a good storytelling, but the filming is not nice. And the Nigerian films, their way of filming and all that, is, it's nice, but the story and all that, the context of the story, yes, it's bad. Samuel is not a big fan of the local film industry. Myself, I don't really like a lot of like bongo movies, and because I see, I see that um, it's very static. In, you see, uh, like a feature film or a drama film made here in Tanzania, you, you look at it and you look at film made in, in, in Nigeria. There's no different. You know, it's more or less the same thing. That what actually is happening is that we as Tanzania are copying what has been done in Nigeria. We, we, there's so much we can do here, which actually because we need to bring our identity. We need to do something about who we are, so Tanzania and Kenya as well, and Rwanda. I mean, we have to you know, raise up our own identity. The KFI is well known in the East African film community. It's clear to everybody. Early in the year, they hosted a workshop that included filmmakers from other institutes in Kenya, Rwanda, and even Burundi. They brought fresh perspectives to share with the KFI staff and students, and they learned plenty themselves. Par rapport aux autres pays, par rapport par exemple à ici, je dirais qu'on est encore un peu plus en, a, en arrière, peut-être, mais euh, je dirais quand même qu'on est en train de devenir aussi et de se mettre sur le même niveau que les autres pays. I think which makes the world uh, better it's people to see things in a different way. So if East African see things in a different way, actually it's like every country have his own culture. So if we are different, it will be sweet to those who will be watching it. A lot of us, we have already lost our culture of what because we are looking to the culture of other persons so through the films. So for me, uh, I'll say, I'll make a film that is true story and also it can base on our culture, our morals and our nationality. You know, get out of that shell of like only thinking about what is being done in, in, in Hollywood because that is their genes, that's how they see life. We should come up with a film that actually reflects who we are as 
Africans, who we are as Tanzania, who we are as Kenyans and the rest, because that's how we share what is happening from one country to another, and that's how we share what we have in different cultures. So far, the KFI's crowning achievement has been Tazama, a current affairs program that deals with street and village level issues. It proved to be a hit after just one season on local TV, reaching over two million viewers. The pride in the program here is obvious. Tazama is special because I can say it's one of the best documentary program in, in Tanzania because we are featuring a life of people and also we give voice for the voiceless because we, we, we are talking to ordinary people and the story comes from the ordinary people. A second season of Tazama has been completed and KFI has more magazine shows in the works. Arusha may seem like an out-of-the-way place to host the Film Institute. Besides the natural beauty of the area, there are other reasons KFI's founders like to stay in Arusha. If you want to really do a good training, particularly in film, and you have to have a place where it's, it's, it's nice, calm and you know, cool, that you can have a very good area that you can go and start where there's no all these disturbances. For me, it's fantastic. It's, it's the place. place I love so much. And I expect to invest more in Arusha because my family, all of them are here in Arusha. I born here, I raised here in Arusha. I love Arusha. It's the best place. Wow. It gives students a chance to shoot stories in an environment they're familiar with and choose subjects that fit in with their own backgrounds. Doing the fieldwork is, of course, the most fun part of the filmmaking process for most of the students. Besides teaching these young people a craft they will enjoy as their life's work, KFI has big plans for Tanzania's film future. Ten years to come, if we'll manage to produce like um, uh, 500 youth who will be in the industry. I mean, working as a sound guy, as a camera, as a DOP, as producers and all that. I think uh, uh, I can easily tell that uh, the film industry in Tanzania will be transformed by then.